Yeah, the reason I hired John Pike was uh, I've been doing this for 12 years now, and for 11 years I was hiring people because they were nice people. Um, that was really my interview process. I would go in and you know, ask the interview questions that we're supposed to ask, and everyone would always answer the questions the way I would want them to answer it. Um, so I, I felt like I was interviewing. Uh, they were professional interviewers, I felt like. I, I hired every person I interviewed pretty much. Um, it got to the point where, and I think my ninth or tenth year, my staff said, you're not interviewing anyone anymore. You're not making any more hiring decisions because I literally just believe uh, the good in people. So, uh, you know, sometimes that's great and sometimes it's not. But uh, I would uh, I would walk out of every, every interview process and go talk to my office manager and say, I got a winner. She's great. She's going to be a rock star. And then you know, two months later, three months later, uh, they would fail. Now, Mark, you've been you've been around for a long time in the industry. I'm sure you've taken other recruiting training or recruiting hiring courses or whatnot. Um, yeah. But you, you still ended up hiring them just because you liked them, even though maybe you knew you should have done that. Yeah, I would hire people just based on the fact that they believed they could do the job. Okay. If they believed, I wanted to have the confidence, and I wanted to believe that they could do the job as well. So how did you hear about John, and what did he do differently? that made this successful for you. And we'll get into the results here shortly, but what, what was different about John's process? Yeah, I, I heard about John through some other agents that I network with across the country. Mm -hmm. And they said that, uh, you know, he's, uh, the people that he interviewed and he hired um, were, you know, right on point, exactly what they were looking for. And so I went into it with blind faith, made that call. And you know, I'm that guy that just tries everything and some things work and some things don't. Um, so I, I called him up. We spoke for a little while. He, he actually came down to the office, which was um, amazing. He drove down, um, did a one-day presentation for my my entire staff, my agents, um, all about uh, the disc profiling and personality profiling, and, mm -hmm. and uh, everybody ate it up. Uh, what positions were you having a lot of turnover in? What was the what, was, what were the positions that you were having needed help with? Uh, mostly, uh, pretty much all my staff uh, was constantly turning over, closing department. How many people um, do you have there on your team? Uh, we're comprised of 21, 21 or 22 people. And how many of those are admin and how many of those are salespeople? Uh, we have probably about uh, eight, or nine, uh, eight or nine admin. It's probably half and half, close to half and half. Yeah, and you're selling how many homes a year? How many homes do you sell this year? Uh, this year we're, gonna, we're trying to top 500 homes. That's pretty good, man. All right. Yeah. So you want to hire on salespeople to actually go prospect and, and do work. So um, how long ago did John help you with this hire for your sales team? Uh, John started with us about, I think it's been about nine months now. Okay. So, you have uh -huh. good, so the, you're actually seeing if they play out and actually perform at this point. Yeah, we've, we've still got every person that he's, he's recommended we hire. We still have them, and they've been great. So, John, like what, what did you do with Mark? So he's been hiring people if he likes them. You came in and changed something. And obviously they're sticking around now and performing. So tell me the secret here. The secret really is the set of tools that I use. They're t not only are they time tested, the most important of all is that it's, sci it's a science. It's scientifically proven. It's based on statistics. So when I met and went and delivered a presentation to his team, before I actually went on site, every one of their people, every one of Mark's people took the assessment. And I knew from those assessments, who his best two people in his sales force were, pretty much head and shoulders above everybody else because their, their, their assessment profiles were so incredibly strong that I knew that those two people were the ones that were his absolute rainmakers. And these assessments are completely different than like the free disc assessment you get like the Tony Robbins website, right? It's, it's more than that. It's much more comprehensive, exactly. A disc is uh, only one small piece of the puzzle. It's an important piece, but it only is one-dimensional. It measures personality. And, you know, as Mark alluded to, you know, when he was interviewing people, people are much more complex than just a personality style, what you see across the table. In fact, sort of like the iceberg analogy, 88% of the iceberg is hidden. It's underneath the water. Well, actually, more than 90% of a person in terms of who they are, how persistent do they handle rejection, how much confidence do they have, you know, are they good interacting with people? All of that is actually hidden. It's underneath. It's something that you can't measure or see. So, so Mark, that's why this is an absolute breakthrough. So, Mark, tell me more about that. When, when you when you interviewed the final candidates that John presented to you, 
Did you notice anything different? What, did you still like them? Or maybe you didn't like them, that's why they perform, or what's... When you got the final can how did you feel about the final candidates after they were screened by John? Well, like I said, I mean, to me, everybody seemed great, so I honestly didn't notice, you know, a difference. Everybody answered the questions in the way that I wanted them to answer them. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of, uh, I, I look back at it and think about it uh, back in my dating uh, dating days, you know. Every girl you go out with, uh, you know, the first, uh, the first month was, you know, wow, that's the greatest girl in the world. And you don't really realize the flaws or the imperfections until you're you're over that honeymoon stage. And so, you know, the people who hire the the first month, everything was great, but then as time went on, you know, balls start dropping. You start seeing the holes in all the buckets, and and then you realize where you hired wrong. So let me just ask you this: You're nine months into the hire with John. Um, I know it's difficult to quantify, but just using your gut experience of selling this many homes and working with so many salespeople, what would you say is like the economic value? From hiring John, he's created through these hires. The total economic value this has brought you. Is there a way that maybe you can quantify that in some way? Uh, yeah, I can quantify very easily. Priceless. You know, the turnover is what sets us back. So when you're going in growth spurts, when you're growing a company, every time you have to rehire someone and retrain them on on everything we do, you know, there's there's a six month to a one year lag time before they're up and running up to you know, where you really want them to be. Um, so, you know, consistency, like I said, it's priceless. Uh, just keeping someone on board and, and having them realize, you know, the culture, uh, the concepts, the systems, the tools. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so you, you just know. hired John, and next thing you know, he just gave you candidates, right? That's it. I mean, we, that's literally what we do. We get people Sounds who apply. Simple. Yeah, it's real simple. We get people who apply. I send them an email, tell them they have to, you know, Fill this out. John looks at it. He assesses it. He emails me back. Tells me the uh, the pluses, the minuses, uh, the good, the bad, the ugly, and uh, we go forward. What would you say to someone that's maybe on the fence about spending the money on the consultant to get this done correctly? Someone that's been doing this on their own. I mean, maybe why haven't you done this sooner? Or what would you say to someone who's on the fence about using this assessment and getting an expert to do this? I mean, the answer is obvious, but I want to hear it from you. Yeah, no, no question. The answer is obvious. Um, when you're growing a team, when you're growing any business, you got to have the right people sitting on the right seats on the bus. You know, that's uh, that's the most important part of growing a business is making sure you have the right people. Um, I'm not an expert. I'm an expert at selling homes, and you know what I preach to my clients is every part of the real estate transaction is conducted by an expert. So I've got a closing coordinator, a listing department. I've got someone that specializes in every aspect of the transaction, and so I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't have an expert that was bringing on the right people to sit on the right seats on my bus. So I'm just curious, how long do the other salespeople last, the ones that brought on and fell off? How long would they last with you before they would let go? Uh, you know, just because of my personality type, I, I, like I said, I think the good in everybody. Um, usually within 90 days, so with the 90 days, you pretty much knew. Yeah, and, and how, to be honest... How many salespeople have you gone through in the history of you running your business? Uh, probably went through, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe a dozen. A dozen? Okay. Yeah. That's pretty cool. John, do you have any other questions for Mark? Or anything, Mark, that you want to share that um, someone should want to know about maybe hiring or onboarding a salesperson? Well... Go ahead, John. Mark, I, um, I was going to ask you, we haven't connected in quite a while, but I helped you hire a new ISA, an inside sales agent, associate rather. Uh, her name is Lisa. Um, I had a chance to talk to uh, some uh, one of the salespeople that, uh, that she's supporting, and he is on pace, he said, to double his transactions this year. Would you mind just kind of adding some color and some, some commentary to what you've seen in terms of her performance? Yeah, there's actually two ISAs that you've uh, that you've recommended we hire, and we did. One was Caroline, um, who is last week she set 23 appointments in one week. I'm not making that number up. 23 appointments last week. These are seller leads, so she set 23 seller appointments to come in um, and list their home with us. And these are in-office appointments. Keep in mind, so they're not the easiest appointments to set. We don't go out to the sellers' homes anymore. They all come to our office. So. We set 23 appointments last week. That was Caroline. And then Lisa, the girl you're talking about, is uh, is one of my buyer specialist assistants. And 
he has 11 pending transactions uh, for the month of May right now to close. 11, which, uh, you know, last year I think he closed maybe 30, 35 deals. Um, even if he does half of the 11 every month, he'll double his sales. But I think he'll probably somewhere between double and triple his volume this year. That's great. Because of that, that higher. How long is the ISA that set 23 appointments with you, Mark? Uh, she's been with me since, I think, January we hired her, so about five months now. That's great. 23 seller and office appointments in a week? That's what she said. Absolutely we, unheard of. You know, probably 70% will actually make it into the office, yeah. but still, 23. She averages between 40 and 50 appointments in a month. Mm-hmm. Last week was uh, a great week, but still 40 to 50 a month is, is still stellar. Well, that's great, man. And this assessment by hiring John helped you find these people and made it a lot easier for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I wonder how many people I, I passed on that were probably great hires in the past. So I'm only looking at the mistakes I made, but I'm not even taking into account the people that I passed on for whatever reason I thought that I never even hired. So how much talent did I miss? That's a that number I can't even put anything on. Johnny, right. else you want to say, uh, how would someone get a hold of you? Well, first, before I do, I want to mention that Caroline's assessment is – Without question, one of the best assessments. She's clearly in the top 1% of everyone that's ever taken this assessment in the world. So when you have this type of science behind you and you can identify the same thing with Lisa, also an extremely strong assessment profile. The relationship between scoring high on the assessment and consistent peak performance is, a, is, more, is about 90%. So that's what you're dealing with. Uh, the way that you can get in touch with me is either by email. It's uh, my, my first name, J-O-H-N, letter A, and last name is Pike, P-Y-K-E, at gmail.com, or uh, simply reach out to me on my cell phone, which is 336-210-0327. Great. Well, Mark, I really appreciate the kind words about um, how John's helped you out today. Thank you.